Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at changing cameras and some of the things we can do with, with blending between cameras. Um, today I received three nice new shiny monitors. Uh, I've got them all set up so I should have a, an improved workflow which means that my tutorial should now be a lot smoother for you guys so I can kind of have references up on my other screens instead of going uh, um, ah, all the time. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump into a project here. We're going to make this a third person create the project and while that loads I'm going to quickly show you what we're going to be making so if I bring on my project in over here you can see that I've got a camera actor up there and some kind of stuff going on down here and if I jump into the game from here I can open that door so we can go and view actually what we're going to be making so I flip the switch and if I go in here you'll notice that my camera changes from the player camera there to one that's up in a third person kind of view Oopsie daisies. Uh, and so that's what we're going to make is for a switch to switch between um, that first the first person camera there, or third person even, and then the uh, static camera. So let's jump into this, move this project out of the way, and move a fresh project back on over here. So we've got our third person character here that runs around and whatnot. So let's get let's get started on this. The first thing we're going to want to add, obviously, is a camera. So we'll add a camera there. Uh, let's not have it in the floor, and let's have it face somewhere a little bit more interesting. Let's have it... Oh, that's an awful angle. Dreadful. Um, let's tilt it down a bit to start with. Spin it up. Spin it, and like that. Okay, so when the character starts walking up these stairs, let's make it switch to this camera. So to, to detect the stairs, we're going to use a trigger volume. Drag a box trigger into the world. I'm going to scale that out and way across and up. So anytime the player is inside this volume, it's going to use that static camera that we've just created there. Anytime he's out of it, it's going to switch back to his normal camera. So how do we do this? Well, this is an inner class blueprint, so this is inside the level blueprint. And let me just uh, separate these two windows here. And, oh dear, that's not... That's fine. Okay. So with the, uh, damn it, these three monitor things taking some getting used to. So with the trigger box here selected, we're going to uh, move in here and right click and add an event, collision. We want a begin overlap and an end overlap. So we'll start with the begin overlap. We also want to select the camera. There she is and drag that into here to get a reference to the camera actor. Now, from here, it's not going to come up on context sensitive, so you need to untick that. And we're going to uh, view, sorry, what was that? View, tag, oh, untick context sensitive, like I just said. Um, view, view, target, no, it's not view target, oh. Yeah, sorry, set view target with blend. That's the one you're looking for. I'm going to get that out there. So I can full screen this now. So you set view target with blend. And the target is going to be get player controller. I can just right click context sensitive for speed there. And this return value is going to be the target. And we can tick up the on begin overlap to this now. Now I'm going to quickly demonstrate this, and then I can demonstrate the blend time once I demonstrate it. So let's jump into the game, and when we run forward, it switches to this camera. So we can see ourselves there now, but when we leave it does nothing because we've not actually programmed that yet. So what does the blend time do? Well you notice there how it instantly switched to the camera. If I set this blend time to something like 5 seconds, and demonstrate that again, when I run in, it will now take 5 seconds for the camera to move from my player to the other camera. Just so you know that what blend time does there, so if you want it to move over quicker or slower, you can adjust the blend time accordingly. I'm going to set this to something like one second. This is in seconds, by the way. Now, the end overlap. The end overlap is a little bit trickier. Off this, we need to call get all actors a class. And the class we're looking for is your third person class. So we're going to go with uh, third person character. So this is going to get us all the third person characters in the game, but because it's a single player game, there's only going to be one. Now this array, we need to execute a for each loop. 
So every t for every actor, it's going to do a certain thing. Now, obviously, there's only going to be one actor, so it's only going to run the loop body once. And that, what we want that to do then, is we want that to cast to the uh, the character that we've got. So cast to, sorry, it's third person, third person character. And now the specific third person character it's going to cast to will be the one that we found in the world. So what this does, let's talk through this. So we're looking for every every third person character that's in the world. There's only going to be one of them, let's name him Bill. So for every character there is in the world, we're going to do this. So there's only one Bill, so it's going to cast to Bill. Now if there was Bill and Jeff, it would cast to Bill, and then it would cast to Jeff. But since that's getting pretty confusing, but basically because there's only one, it's only going to cast to Bill. So we can copy this blend, and we're going to do the same thing, but blend back now. Now the target is still the uh, first person character here, the controller and whatnot, sorry. However, the new target is now the new, th new third person character. So what this is doing is now saying, okay, cool, uh, let's go back, basically. Let's head on back. And that wants to come off of successful cast here. Now, this is the part of the video that, as always, I always hate in case it goes wrong, but let's give it another shot. And hopefully now when we run in, it takes a second, we can see Bill, and when Bill runs away from the stairs, we switch on back to his normal camera. You may notice these uh, black edges around the side there. Now they can easily be removed by playing around in the camera settings, so uh, constraint aspect ratio. If we untick that, you'll notice that now we don't have those black boxes anymore. We run back out, still no black boxes. So I hope that video's helped. Um, I mean, just to quickly add over, if you want to add some kind of um, things that kind of make it into a like a security camera kind of thing, you can add a bit of grain there. You can play around with all these camera settings. So when I run inside there, it now becomes a security camera kind of effect. And when I leave, I switch back. So yeah, there you go, guys. So I hope that tutorial's helped. I hope you've uh, learned a little bit more about playing with blends and cameras now. And if there's anything else I can make you use a tutorial for, please, as always, leave a comment in the description below in the, um, not the description, the comment section. Um, fantastic, hope that helps. But stay subscribed to uh, see more Unreal Engine 4 tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.